What's good, y'all? I'm French, the bro host, sitting in for my brother, Josh So Focus, and we would like to welcome you to the Knicks Take Podcast. This is episode 67. It's a weekly podcast where we cover the most intriguing Knicks news of the week. Make sure to follow us on our socials. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, slash X, by searching for the Knicks Take. Also, be sure to check us out on our website at knickstake.com. And if you love what you hear, please subscribe to us on whatever platform you're listening to us on. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the notification bell. And if you know any Knicks fans who might enjoy this show, just let them know that this is the best place to get some Knicks information. And now, the show. I'm going to do a little brief outline. We're going to be covering the games that happened this week. The Knicks faced off against the Raptors, Jazz, Phoenix Suns, which we're going to talk a lot about. And then we're going to do a brief overview of the games that are going to be coming up in this next week. And just a a few things happened this week, news-related topics that are pretty big news that we're going to cover as well. Lost a loss of a, a player. We signed a player this week. And there's just a lot of things that happened this week that's, that we're going to cover. I feel like I said it this week like four times just now, but it's all good. So to start, first game back home in Madison Square Garden, the Knicks faced off against the Raptors after losing to Boston and Milwaukee last week. And the big news coming into this game was that the Knicks lost out on their defensive anchor, Mitchell Robinson, who unfortunately had to have surgery on his ankle. And he's going to be out for the next few months. He won't be back until February. But coming out into the shoot around, the Knicks came out wearing Mitchell Robinson T-shirts. Uh, Julius Randle had his the Mitchell Robinson logo on his T-shirt. And they showed love. And it, it made it clear that this game was going to be specifically for Mitch. He, was under, he, was, he wasn't feeling too good about having that surgery. And he's been having, like, one of his best starts to the, the NBA season that he's had since being in the NBA He's been in consideration for all defensive player. And, yeah, the Knicks are going to definitely miss him. But after being on a two-game losing streak, the Knicks came out and let it be known uh, immediately that they came to play against the Raptors. Julius Randle had a great game. There's nobody really on the the Toronto Raptors that could guard him. He, He was aggressive, getting rebounds. Had 34 points this game, five assists. Jericho Sims was the starter in place of Mitchell Robinson, and he got up to a, a slow start since he hasn't really played all year, but he he still was able to grab seven rebounds. Didn't get any blocks, any steals, or anything like that, but he had a plus five overall in the, on his game. Jalen Brunson finished the night with 21 points, had four, four free throws out of his six attempts. Three threes out of five attempts, seven for 12 from the field. Great play from our our two best players. And R.J. Barrett had his best game of the season, had 27 points, hit three of eight of his three-point attempts. And it was just a a, a great all-around performance. Like This was the closest game between the Raptors and the Knicks um, that they've had all year. O.G. Ananobi had 29 points on the Raptors. And they came out to play. They they were on a losing streak, and they were trying to get it ended. But the Knicks were also on a losing streak. So each each team came to play. But the Knicks just had more to play for. Mitchell Robinson being injured, getting the tough schedule that we got because of the in-season tournament. They just came out with a lot more energy, came with a, with, with a defensive presence in the second half that we haven't really seen in the last few games, and they they basically ran the score up a little bit at the end. Not really too much. They they finished the game 136 to 130, but it was clear pretty pretty early in the fourth quarter that the Knicks were going to win this game, probably like halfway through. And after the game, Julius Randle posted a post for, for Mitchell Robinson saying to, to rest up, get better, don't worry, because we got you, big fella. 
And Mitchell Robinson appreciated that post a lot. So that's pretty much all I really got to say about that game. I, I predicted that we would win that game pretty convincingly. It was a little more nip and tuck and close for the first half. And we made it. We made that a, a good comeback for the Garden. So the Knicks head to Utah to start their West Coast trip. This game was more nip and tuck. Another example of how it was in Toronto or, or in New York against the Raptors. This was Larry Markinen's first game back from injury. Um, he got right back into the groove of things. And he's also been in some trade rumors. So I always looked at Larry Markinen as a player that could be useful in the Knicks. He leads the NBA in catch and shoot threes. And he showed that pretty, pretty early in this game against the Knicks. Um, Colin Sexton filled in as a starter, and their young rookie got injured four minutes into the game, Keontae George. He's been having a, a really good season so far, but the Raptors are a below-average team. They came into this night 7-15. and 15. I didn't think that this game would be one that the Knicks would really struggle with just due to the fact that they didn't really have anybody who could stop Jalen Brunson or Julius Randle because they just are so young. They don't really have any big players who can match the speed of Randu. They don't really have any guys outside of possibly Chris Dunn who can match up with Jalen Brunson. And the whole the whole first half, the, the Jazz were staying right in it. They were staying right in the, in, the, in the thick of things with the Knicks. They assisted on damn near every field goal that they made. And when it came to the Knicks scoring, it seemed like they had to power through and force everything to get a good shot off. It wasn't really much ball movement. Julius Randle was the main Nick that could get things going. And the three-point shooting for the Knicks, just things just weren't falling. Jalen Brunson finished this night 0 for 6 from 3. R.J. Barrett had his worst game of the season so far. He couldn't really get a shot to fall all night. He finished the night 3 for 16 from the field, 0 for 7 from 3. He knocked down three of his four free throws, but outside of that, he couldn't really get any of his shots to fall. Um, Emmanuel quickly came off the bench and provided a spark, but he was the only player that really could get things going. He had 15 points, 6 for 8 from the field, 3 for 4 from 3. He was the only player on the bench that knocked down any of his three-pointers. Josh Hart finished the night with zero points, two rebounds. That's very uncharacteristic for him. And, yeah, this is just a tough night in Utah. A tough night in Utah. The Knicks lose this game 117-113. to 113. Julius finished the night with 32 points, 12 rebounds, six assists. Brunson finished with 23 points, but like I said, he couldn't knock down any of his five attempts from, five attempts from three. And it seemed like... They came into this game just prepared to walk over the Utah Jazz, and then once they weren't ready to roll over, the Knicks just had to form a, a, a late spark at the end of the game, but due to missed free throws and no, not being able to knock down any, any of their threes, they struggled to, to edge this one out. So the Knicks lose right before they head to the Phoenix Suns. With this game in Utah, I felt like the Knicks could have came more prepared. Um, but it's tough to tell when it's a team that's like under 500 and a bunch of young players on the roster, the best player being injured, and you're not sure if he's going to come back. But at the same time, the Knicks are a much better playoff team than most of the teams in the NBA. And facing off against a team at home or on the road, I should say, you have to be mentally prepared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any team in the NBA because every team has talent. Every team has young talent on, on their team that is capable of just winning a game. And if you're not prepared, they're going to smell the blood in the water and they're going to attack. They're going to get their crowd involved. They're going to get their teammates involved. And then if you're not prepared to fight back, then it's just going to be a long night for you. Um, even if you have star talent in Julius Randle, you have star talent in Jalen Brunson, you have to be cohesive as a unit and 
that's what Utah Jazz showed us. They showed us that they came to play. They have chemistry. They know what plays to run with each other. Colin Sexton is a guy who got traded from, t- um, from team to team. He feels like he has a home here in Utah, or there in Utah, I should say. He finished the night with 26 points, and he was just getting all his shots to go. And they just seemed real comfortable playing with each other. And the Knicks didn't seem like they scouted to see who was going to do what. And it showed. It showed. And if we're going to be one of the best teams in the East, it's best to come prepared to every matchup. And hopefully they learn their lesson from this because this is one of their worst losses this season, in my opinion. So it can't be just my opinion because going into this next game, which I believe is one of the most memorable games of this season so far, the Knicks head into Phoenix for a late start at 10 p.m. This was a nationally televised game being shown on ESPN. And from the opening tip, the Knicks just looked like they came to play. Jalen Brunson had the best game of his career. He was going at it with Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, who are two of the top talents in the NBA. Kevin Durant's one of the best players in NBA history. We haven't beaten any team that Kevin Durant has been on for the last 10 years. And throughout the first half, it's just been going back and forth with the lead. The Knicks will take the lead. Phoenix will take the lead. Third quarter starts. And if you've been watching our episodes, you know the third quarter of doom has been something that's been lingering. The Knicks just don't come out with any life. And the other team would just run up a score and we got to fight back just to get the game to be competitive again. But this game, the third quarter is when Jalen Brunson came alive. He went five for five from three in the third quarter alone. Finished the night with 50 points, nine assists, six rebounds. This is one of the most well-played games from anybody in NBA history, according to the stats. And Jalen Brunson put the team on his back. Julius Randle was a leader of this team, was a leader of this game. And... From the way that he started this season, this is something that people really couldn't see coming. He he came out, was getting his his teammates involved. He was getting his shots off. There wasn't anybody on Phoenix who could guard him individually. And with no Mitchell Robinson, the paint was wide open for Phoenix all night. So it really took a, a, a strong effort from our best players to keep this game out of reach for the Phoenix Suns. This was Kevin Durant's first game back, if I'm not mistaken. Bradley Bill injured his ankle a few minutes into this game. So we didn't have to face the the trifecta of Bradley Bill, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant all at once for too long. But Devin Booker still came to play. He had 28 points, 9 assists. Kevin Durant had 29 points. Nurkic had 21 and 12. But the Knicks just came out. They didn't want to lose two straight on the road to start their road trip. And it was it was clear. It was clear. And after this game, Julius Randle made sure to get his hands on the game ball for Jalen Brunson just to uh, poke fun at an incident that took place earlier in the, in the week where the former MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo, he went crazy in the game after he scored a franchise record 64 points and ran into the Pacers locker room where... They took the game ball and just gave it to one of their rookies after he scored his first points, even though they lost the game. And, yeah, they, 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 they just had some fun with this, this moment because Jalen Brunson had to get put the best game of his career, nine for nine from three. And this was by far, like, the best win of the season to me. I wasn't expecting for the Knicks to blow out Phoenix the way that they did. I thought this would have been a nip-and-tuck game. And in the, in the fourth quarter, they just took control of this game on the road. There was a bunch of Knicks fans in the crowd who was representing, sent the Phoenix home, the Phoenix fans home early. And it was, just a, it was just a great night to end the week off with a lot to look forward to moving forward. Um, there's not much you could really say about this game other than the fact that it's crazy that Jalen Brunson wasn't an all-star. Last year, he wasn't considered for All-NBA. He's one of the best point guards in the East. He's one of the best point guards in the NBA. And he's proved that night in and night out 
for New York for the last two years, going back to the the, the years that he played in Dallas, and I I think he's tired of being disrespected. I think it's safe to say that Jalen Brunson is going to be in the NBA for a long time, and he's going to be playing at this high level for a very long time. Even in the post game, Kevin Durant was saying that Jalen Brunson is going to be a hall of a hall of famer when it's all said and done. And that's big praise coming from one of the best players in the history of the game. I personally feel like this is something that we can get accustomed to seeing from Jalen Brunson. He's probably not going to go off of 50 points every night. Most likely not. But the way that he scores his points, it's the same way every night. And he's the mo- one of the most efficient players in the NBA. How many guys have you seen go nine for nine from the three? Doesn't happen that often. He went seven for 23 as a 6'2 point guard. And that's something that you rarely ever see. He still was getting his teammates involved. Nine assists, six rebounds, five steals. This was the best game of his career by far. And it wasn't like he did something that isn't easily, not easily, but he could definitely replicate this performance because it's not out of the norm for him. He 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 gets his shot off in the same fashion every time. He get he he goes for the pull up mid range. He he's been so much more efficient from three this year, and he just played with so much intensity that it was hard to match his 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 uh, energy this game for Phoenix, even though they had two MVP caliber players. So that says a lot. That says a lot to me personally. And that pretty much wraps up all the games this week. It's been an up and down week for us so far, but I predicted that we would go undefeated. Utah, the game surprised me the most, but the Phoenix game was definitely the most exciting game for the last few seasons, at least in my opinion. And... That's that that's that's just a lot to say when it comes to this team Com- coming from a team that made it to the second round for the first time in decades. And we I think we have a lot to look forward to when it comes to this this unit, because there's a lot of guys on the team that's going to get better. Emmanuel quickly is one of the best players on the team. He still hasn't really come alive the way, the way that he's capable of. Julius Randle's finally playing consistent basketball. He's playing with a lot more poise. He's playing a lot more under control. He's not shooting threes as much as he was the previous seasons, and he's attacking a lot more. He realized that there's not many guys in the NBA that can guard him one-on-one, and he's taking full advantage of that. DiVincenzo is looking like one of the best shooters on the team. He could be one of the best shooters in the NBA if he's a lot more comfortable in his role as a starter. And Quentin Grimes... We said that he's been struggling. He's been getting back into his groove ever since he's got coming off the bench. He hit three threes this game. He's been a lot more aggressive, driving, uh, driving lanes and getting the ball to open teammates. Kevin Durant also tried to come at him a little bit after the post game. He said that Quentin Grimes can't be getting six threes up because he doesn't have any free throws in the whole season and he doesn't really get many assists. I completely disagree with that because I think Quentin Grimes is capable of a lot more than what he's shown, but that's just going to show that how much better this team can get. And after this win, it's hard to say that any team can really beat us convincingly, kind of convincingly because we can just match up with any team in the NBA at this point. There's not any team that's head and shoulders above the New York Knicks. And when's the last time you've been able to say that? Speaking of which, the Knicks are going to head to L.A. At the time of this recording, they're going to play the Clippers tonight on the back end of a back-to-back. Both teams coming in with an identical record of 14-10. and The Knicks won the last game in New York against the Clippers. And if you remember that, this was the first game that James Harden actually played with this team. And they had some issues with chemistry. And today, it's a... Much different scenario. The the Clippers are riding a six-game winning streak. They've won 11 of the last 14 games. And they just appear to be a much more cohesive team than the one that we faced early in the season. 
They're currently the seventh seed in the West. They're sitting at 14 and 10. But my prediction for this game, after this hot, this hot streak that Jalen Brunson went on, I can see it continuing the very next night, right in Crypto Arena. They're gonna the Knicks are gonna ride their momentum into yet another road win. And I think Jalen Brunson can replicate this performance that he just showed against Phoenix. Maybe not going off for 50 points, but I can see him going off for at least 30. Julius Randle, he's going off against the Clippers in the past. There's not many, not not many. There's not really anybody on the roster that can go up against him because he's so much stronger than everybody. He's quicker than everybody on that roster. At least anybody who's the same size as him, he can just run right past him or bully them. And yeah, I just feel like there's it's a it's a bad matchup for the Clippers. The Clippers are like a, a, a real star-studded team, but they don't really have anybody that can stop the guys that can get going. They don't have anybody who can stop Jalen Brunson. They don't have anybody who can really guard him one-on-one, -on -one, and they don't really have anyone who can match the production that he 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 provides to the game. And I can see this being a close game, but I definitely see the Knicks edging this one out. Following this game, on Monday, December 18th, the Knicks will stay in L.A. to go back to the same arena to play LeBron James and the L.A. Lakers. The Lakers, if you don't know, were the winners of the in-season tournament. But ever since they won that trophy, they lost two of the last three games. And one of these losses came against the worst team in the NBA in San Antonio Spurs, who hasn't won a game since October, if I'm not mistaken. I think they've gone over a month and a half without a single win, yet they just beat the L.A. Lakers in San Antonio. Anthony Davis missed that last game due to injury. So his status for this next game is up in the air. The Lakers are also an eighth seed right now with a record of 15 and 11. And my prediction for this game is slightly dependent on Anthony Davis' status because... If he sits this one out, the Lakers should probably lose this one in convincing, fa convincing fashion. And if he does play, I think the Knicks will still win, but it's probably going to just be a, a nail-biter. It's hard for me to, to predict any Knicks losses after this game that I watched last night, to be honest. So I'm a little biased. But the Knicks will match up well with the Lakers. Um, the wild card for the Lakers is probably former Nick Cam Reddish, who's now a starter for them, but... If you could remember, he was on the Knicks, and he didn't really get an opportunity to really stick with the roster due to his inconsistency. And with the way that he's playing for the Lakers right now, it seems like he's a lot more comfortable with that lineup. Um, he has the, 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 he's getting the help from LeBron James, who's probably giving him a lot of game and advice, showing him how he can fit in well with his team. And I can see him trying to get a revenge game going against the Knicks just because he couldn't get the opportunity with us. Um, but I feel like the way that we played this week, it shows that the Knicks have figured it out how to play as a team. They know they're moving the ball a lot more. It seems like they're enjoying playing together. Quentin Grimes is feeling a lot more comfortable with his role. R.J. Barrett is starting to go back to the form that he was in before. And we, we've, we've matched up well with the Lakers in the past, so I can see us definitely edging this game out as well. After this, the Knicks will return to New York. They're going to play in the Barclays against the Brooklyn Nets, who are currently sitting at the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference with a record of 13 and 11. The Knicks, they've matched up well with the Brooklyn Nets ever since Kevin Durant and Kyrie left town. So the player to watch for Brooklyn now is Cam Thomas. He's their leading scorer who averages nearly 23 points per game. And Spencer Dinwiddie is another name that uh, is another player who's given the Knicks fits in the past. But if these are your two best players, there's not really much cause for concern. This should be another easy win for the Knicks, barring any huge eruption from a random player. And the only player that I feel like Brooklyn has that could probably give Julius Randle any fits is Ben Simmons. And Ben Simmons is out with injury. So this is a game that I'm not really concerned with at all. I already know what to expect. Every time that we faced off against Brooklyn, it's been a pretty convincing win for the Knicks. 
And I, I think this is going to be another big Julius Randle game just because of the tear that he's been on since his since the early struggles he's had this season. He's been a great leader this year so far. He's even given a lot more effort on the defensive end. So the rivalry in New York that used to exist, I don't really feel like it's going to be much of a rivalry when the Knicks just continue to beat up on Brooklyn as much as they do. Um, and speaking of Julius Randle, just in the last 10 games, he's been averaging 27 points, 9.2 rebounds, and almost six assists. And he's definitely one of the best players in the NBA because the only other players who replicate the numbers like this are basically MVP candidates. If he can continue to play like this, especially against the teams that we're supposed to be facing off against, I, it's, it's hard to predict any type of losses because he's playing the game extremely confidently. He's being consistent. He's not really replicating the previous seasons where he would just go play bully ball or just go shoot a bunch of threes and hog the ball for, for plays at a time. He's a lot more under control. He's playing poised this year, and he's leading to a lot more threes with his passing, which is something that we desperately needed. And Jalen Brunson seems like he's a lot more comfortable this year as well. So I just see a lot of wins coming forward. The more that these guys play together, the more chemistry that they gain. And I see, I see an exciting, exciting week coming exciting year we're gonna close this year out pretty pretty strong i feel like because we're playing against some tough teams but we're matching up well against them and a lot of these teams that we would think would cause us a lot of issues and problems they haven't really proven to do that so far this year so i'm 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 really just concerned about maybe just the injury from mitchell robinson which is what i'm gonna talk about in a second and that's really it. So, to go to the topics of the week, events that have taken place this week that I haven't spoken on yet, the Knicks signed a player, a former player, and if you haven't heard, one of Tibbs' favorite players in his coaching tenure, Taj Gibson, who we've spoken about previously in, in, in excruciating detail sometimes. And... It's good to see that he's back. Even if he's not going to be in a rotation, he's definitely a veteran that you feel his presence even as a fan. You, you go to the games, you see him energizing his teammates. You see him encouraging his teammates to do things. And if they make a mistake, he'll pull them to the side and tell them what, what to do and what Tibbs is looking for. And this is something that a lot of the newcomers were probably missing like DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, they never really got to play with Taj Gibson. But he's going to be a coach on the on the, on the bench that's that that like his experience is just invaluable. He's play, he's been with Tibbs in Chicago, he's been with Tibbs in Minnesota, and he's also been with Tibbs in New York. And he he took a few years off, went to Washington. He was a free agent and once Mitchell Robinson went down with that injury, the first call that the Knicks made was out to Taj Gibson, and now he's back on a roster to finish out the year. And the impact of losing Mitchell Robinson is definitely going to be tough. But if we have Jericho Sims with Taj Gibson in his ear, we have Isaiah Hartenstein continue to, to be one of the best big men off the bench, It should it, we should be able to weather the storm because Thibodeau is going to be working on game plans for what works best for his team. He's going to make sure to have the best defensive lineup out there as, as much as possible. And we, we have some extra size now. In case of emergency, Taj Gibson could definitely provide some backup power forward minutes. And he's going to be a great mentor to the guys on the, on the bench. So that was a topic of the week. The impact of losing Mitchell Robinson is another topic. It's going to be something that we're going to definitely feel um, in the Phoenix game, there was a lot of wide open dunks and stuff like that that we weren't seeing all year long because Mitchell Robinson wasn't down there. A lot of the possessions in Utah, we saw the center getting wide open in the paint. And that this is something that can't become 
routine. This can't become a habit for the Knicks because they they have perimeter defenders, but they need to be able to show off the paint. They got to make sure the paint is not a place that players are just coming into and getting easy layups on or easy layups at. There has there has to be some type of intensity from the paint all the way going out to the three-point line just so that we can stop having these high-scoring games. And Mitchell Robinson was a big, big reason for why the Knicks would have one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. I see the defensive rating probably dropping some, but once he's back in February, that we should be we should be in good position to to make a good run because that means everyone else is getting their their groove by that point. They're gonna be comfortable in the rotation. They're gonna be comfortable with their roles and He's going to be a seamless fit once he does come back because he he never needed the ball to score. He's only been there for the dirty work, the rebounding, the offensive rebounding, and protecting the rim. So we're, he's going to be sorely missed, but I think we have the guys on the team that we need to to weather the storm as well. And that's all I really got for y'all this week. I know it's a short episode. My brother's gone, so I had to thug it out by myself. So... With that being said, I'd like to bid you adieu. Thank you for listening to the Knicks Take Podcast. Peace, y'all.